Hey y'all, this is your boy Neil Bertella, back with another live video. The most high have been speaking to me. I was laying on my bed. God wanted me to talk about this topic. And it has to do with the society. And the title of this video is called They Love Knowledge, but they hated correction. I'm gonna say it one more time if y'all missed it the first time. The title of this video is called They Love Knowledge. But they hate correction. Now, I'm applying this to today's society. I'm applying this to today's generation. See, we live in a, a, a time where a lot of people are seeking knowledge of self. People are seeking knowledge in different doctrines outside of the Bible. They're going to different religions. They're going to different systems. They're dealing with the occult. They're dealing with witchcraft. They're dealing with all kinds of stuff to get knowledge of self. Because... They're still eating from the tree of good and evil. So today's society loves knowledge, but they hate a correction. How do you know this to be true? Well, if you tell somebody about themselves, if you be honest with them and be upfront about the behaviors that they're doing, they'll tell you, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. That's one thing. Two, they'll tell you, oh, mind your business. They probably curse you out. They probably hit you. They probably curse you. They probably try to get you flagged. I got my page shut down for speaking truth. Both my Facebook and my Instagram. I had got my my YouTube channel, so much strikes on that before, just to speaking the truth. They'll say, who hurts you? They will use shaming language. They'll say anything just so you do not judge them. Right? They'll say, don't judge me, right? But let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Because I wrote down some scriptures, so we're going to get into it. So for those who say that they love knowledge, but they don't like correction, here's a scripture for you. Proverbs 12, verse 1. It says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. Let's say it one more time. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. All right? So how I debate you guys about that? If you say you're about knowledge, you want the truth, you say you're a seeker of truth, you're looking for the truth, then you should be loving discipline. You should love when somebody corrects you on your actions. You should like somebody correcting you on the things that you have a short coming in. See, everybody wants to be praised, but no one wants to be humble. They're looked down at being humble. They look down at the humble person as being weak. They look at weaknesses as... A, 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 a cancer when it's not God said in your weakness I am made strong right even Apostle Paul boasted about his weakness because he understood that if you don't humble yourself all you're going to do is be forever learning but never gaining the truth look at everybody now you have so much knowledge on the internet you could type up anything and you could find it on the internet you know what I'm saying? You got so much books. You got Barnes and Nobles everywhere. Everything is accessible, but look at the state that the human mind is in. Look at the state that our people is in. They're more sexually perverse. They're more sexually degenerated. Look at the look at the music that we're playing. Let's be honest. The music that's out now is garbage. I used to rap. I made a mixtape. You guys could check it out on my YouTube at Neil Aubrey Taylor, right? But I, I gave that up, man. That's probably going to be my only mixtape, to be honest with you, because there's no talent out here anymore. Everybody's talking about the same stuff over and over and over. And it's like the, the language barrier is becoming to a whole other level of retardation. I'm just keeping it real. Because these people do not like to be corrected. They don't want to know when they're going wrong. Here's another scripture for you. Proverbs 15 verse 32. Says, whoever in, it says, whoever ignores instruction despises himself. But he who listens to reproof gains intelligence. You want to know why your intelligence of your kids is decreasing? Because you're not, you're not punishing their ass. You're not beating their ass when they act up in school. You're giving them cookies. You're giving them 
um, video games, you're buying them a PS4, Xbox, and all that stuff, and your kids' grades are dropping low in school. You want them to look fly. You want them to have the, the flyest gear. You just dress them up in vanity. You don't care about your kids. Not only apply to all of y'all, I apply to a lot of y'all though. Right? But your kids is disrespectful. Your kids is making, is bringing shame to your name. Your kids is out here doing a whole bunch of other stuff that they have no business doing. Why? Because it says, whoever ignores instruction despises himself. We have a whole society so narcissistic. They rather hear comments. They rather hear good comments than they hear the truth. Anytime you speak something that's against their belief, oh, you a hater. Oh, block his comments. You know, report this guy because he's, 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 he's being a nuisance, right? But if I kiss your ass and tell you how nice you are and how ill you are, you, 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 you get too big in your ego. Let's keep it real. We live in a society with a bunch of narcissists. Everybody on Facebook is a narcissist. I don't even care how you feel about that. You're a narcissist. This, this act, that's the first flaw. You want to be praised. Because if you didn't want to be praised, you wouldn't have a Facebook. Let's be honest. I admit it to myself. The reason why I have Facebook is to keep in contact with family and, and to get a little praise. Let's keep it above. So it's not nothing. You're not the most worst person in the world if you say that shit. It's about acknowledging your flaws so that you can heal from your traumas. A lot of times you brothers and sisters will never heal from your wounds and traumas because you never address the inner man. You will never address the issue. You will avoid the issue. You will walk around the issue. You will run laps and circles around it. But it says in Proverbs 15 verse 32. It says whoever ignores instruction despises himself. So at the most high your conscience come talk to you. And tell you yo I think you need to clean up your act. You're attracting bad energy in your life. You're like, nah, I'm, I'm not even listening to that. I'm ignoring that. Yo, stop playing loud music. You're waking up the neighbors upstairs. Nah, fuck the neighbors. We gonna do this shit. We gonna party. Your conscience, the Holy Spirit comes to you and tell you, yo, stop having sex unprotected. Stop having sex, period. Nah, man, I gotta live my life. I gotta have my hot girl summer. I gotta have my entanglements. Guess what? You despise yourself. Because if you truly love yourself and if you really knew what sin really was, not just based on traditional Christian upbringing, but if you understood that sin opens the door to demonic possession. Having sex without a marriage license means you're not married to this person. You're just having friends with benefits. You're just whoremongering or you're just being a whore. You're opening the door to, to demonic possession. Oh, I go to church. I'm a Christian. You, so you're telling me because you have the title Christian and because you're born again that Satan can't possess you? That's a lie that the, that the devil told you in church. Because the devil can have legality over you. If you're willfully sinning in the world, he can use the things that you're doing against you. How come uh, a lot of you guys and ladies who say you're born again have still problems in your marriages, but you're born again? How some of you guys who say you're born again still struggling with porn addiction, still struggling with masturbation, still struggling with having sex outside of marriages, or just having sex, period? Why? Because there's demonic... Covenants that have been formed from you sinning willfully. Right? It's a difference between a person who's in the world who's never been saved sinning because they never had God in their life versus a person who had God in their life and choose to still live in the world. You're not exempt. You think you're better. See, that's the pride. That's the foolishness because you don't want to be judged. You, you used to pray to God, but you stopped praying to God. Why? What happened to you? Fell back into your old self. Fell back into your old ways. 
It says in John 14 verse 15, it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, right? So that's what Christ said. A lot of you brothers and sisters like to say, oh, God is love. But he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You say, I love God. We don't show it in your actions. You say you love God. You just say it with words. That's why on that day, he said, Lord, I've done works in your name. So he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. Workers of iniquity. Why? Because your works only show the works of the flesh. It doesn't show the works of the, the Holy Spirit that's supposed to be living in you if you're saying that you're born again. Right? Let me give you Revelations 3 verse 19. Right? It says, Those who I love, I reprove and discipline. So be jealous and repent. Zealous and repent. That's what I meant to say. So Christ said in Revelations 3 verse 19, He said, Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So this is how you know you really a child of God. This is how you know you really walking with God. When God corrects you in your consciousness, when God corrects you in your actions, every time that you sin, you get you feel bad about it. That's how you know you truly repent. People think that because they're born again, they, they will never sin. There's a difference between sinning because you're in the battle to control your life and you're in spiritual warfare, so in that struggle to control your life you happen to slip up that happens to all of us you can as long as you have a flesh suit you're going to sin this let's just make that one thing clear right but the difference between a person who sins and then they pray to god and they repent and they try to live their life to the best of their ability through the grace that's what grace is there for god gives you grace so you can live out the law and which he said if you love me you will keep my commandments. But if you're sinning and never repenting, never praying, never always justifying why you're doing the things that you're doing. So you're like, okay, the Bible tells you not to have sex with the same sex. And that was something that you were delivered from. But you're going back into the world and doing that again when clearly the Bible tells you that. Then that's willful sin because you know better. And you're not even trying to repent to say, God, you know, I had to slip up here and there. No, you're like, that's how I feel. And I don't need you to judge me because God is love. See, now you're using the Bible incorrect. God is love. But he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And he said, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So based on his word, because God does not change his word he would never change his word he's no respect of any persons he said my word would be the same yesterday today and forevermore he said he put his word above his name so if he put his word above his name that means he's not changing it for you who are you if he said that homosexuals whoremongers stealers idolaters adulterers fornicators would not inherit the kingdom of god Yes, he loves you, but he doesn't love your lifestyle. And if you continue to live in your lifestyle and you have unrepented sin in your heart and you don't address that and you die today, God forbid, you are not making it into the kingdom of God. I don't care if you're born again. You have to walk with God and have a daily talk with God. God is about relationship. You guys want relationship with the world. That's why you want the world. You want the knowledge of the world. You don't want the rebuke of God. See, the rebuke of God is his love for you. It's like a parent that's correcting his child. If you're saying you're a child of God, expect rebuke. I have God tell me to my face a lot of times, yo, you're lukewarm. Oh, you're a fornicator. I didn't like to hear that, but I needed to hear that. Because if I was, if God didn't love me, he would never even try to warn me about that. If God didn't love me, I would still be messing with my women who are my friends with benefits. I would still have them in my rotation. I don't have a rotation, man. I got God. That's who I got. I ain't got no chicks in my rotation, bro. I got God. Who do you got? Because these people who you saying you got ain't got you. 
And they got you. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. They got you. And you got got. And guess what? When your ass leave this world, you ain't leaving with them. They ain't leaving with you. You came in this world alone. You won't die alone. A lot of you guys just want attention because you never had it. A lot of you guys have mommy and daddy issues. That's why you're so narcissistic. You're rebelling against correction. You're rebelling against God. When God is love, if God is love, he's going to correct who he loves. Let's go back to Revelation 3 verse 19. It says, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So if you are scared of God's discipline, then you don't truly love God. You saying it out your mouth, but in your heart, you want the world. And just be honest about that. That's how you should start off your prayer with God. Like just say, yo, God, man, teach me how to love you. Because all I know is how to love the world. Just be honest. Like, God, I have lust in my heart. I have a love for money. I have a love for sex. Teach me how to live righteous. You said in your word for it is written. Revelations 3 verse 19. It says those whom I love I reprove and discipline. For the God discipline me. In the way that you need me to be. So I can be you as the perfect vessel. To perform your will on earth. Because when you're walking with God. He needs you to fulfill his will on earth. He cannot use a vessel that's not clean. Yes, a lot of people like to say, oh, God is going to take you as you are. Yes, in the beginning, yes, God is going to accept you for who you are. God is going to accept you. He's going to cleanse you. He's going to baptize you. But he needs you to change your ways. None of you guys and ladies don't want to change your ways. You want to have your way. You want to have your cake and eat it too. And that's not cool. Because God said, how could you eat at my table and eat at the table of devils? Y'all still want to entertain the world but said I'm rolling with God. Y'all only show up to God on Sundays but every single other day. Y'all in the pub partying. Y'all out here with your face mask on. Trying to still live, a, still live a hot girl summer. Still trying to have an entanglement. But Sunday y'all want to pray. No, 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 no. I'm just keeping it real with you. Y'all love knowledge, but you hate correction. You know, the brothers who saying that they deep, they say that they woke. Are you truly woke? I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Are y'all truly woke? Because let's go back to scriptures. It is written. It says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. But he who hates reproof is stupid. So true knowledge is when you learn from your trials and errors. Y'all just got book smart. Y'all like to just sit here and debate you. Debate whoever y'all want to debate about nonsense. That got nothing to do with what's in your heart. God said out of the ish, out of the abundance of the hearts come the issues of life. The reason why America and the whole world is in the situation that it's in. Because you have evil in your heart. And God is judging this world. You thought this COVID-19 was just something that's out. Oh, the leaps has made this shit up? No. Yes. They made it up. But God approved of it. Because that's the judgment. The devil can't do nothing without God's permission. Look, read the story of Job. Satan wanted to attack Job's life. Satan needed God's permission to remove the hedge of protection over Job's life so that he can attack him. Right? So when you live in sin and you live a sinful lifestyle, you live in sexual depravity and you are sexual idolaters. You worship other gods. You into paganism, into blood worship, all that crazy shit. All you're doing is opening doors and portals and gateways to the demonic realm where these demons can inhabit you guys and mess up the world. We like to always blame it on Illuminati. Well, they're part of that too, but y'all not seeing the bigger picture. Y'all not seeing yourselves in the picture. Y'all just want to play victim. The only reason the 1% of people could run this world is because you are allowing them to run this world. By you living an unholy lifestyle. 
If you are praying and fasting and getting right with God, that's your power against the darkness. It said you do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You don't think these Satanists know that this Bible is real? They'll tell you it ain't real, but they, they know it's real. They know that their time is up. They give you a whole bunch of knowledge that's, not, that's half truths and a lot of lies. Satan is the master of lies. He, he been selling the same drugs since the beginning of time. You can't be like God's. That's all you conscious folks want to talk about. All you quote unquote woke dudes want to talk about. I'm my own God. I'm my own goddess. But here you are. Somebody keeps you real truth. Give you real light. Give you real knowledge. Y'all reject it because it's, it, it points out your weakness. That you're not a God. You're not a goddess. You're not all that in a bag of chips. You're not. So when I call you out on your shit or somebody else call you out on your shit, then y'all like, oh, who are you? Who hurt you? Why you a hater? You this, you that. No, it's the truth. Because to see the light, the true light of this world is Christ. He said, no one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus Christ is the true light of the world. If you're rolling with Jesus Christ like you saying you are, expect persecution. I expect to get persecuted from this video. Why? Because I'm rolling with Christ. And I know that there's going to be somebody that's watching this video that's not going to approve of this video. I, I'm aware of that. I'm so used to that. But you see, that's how you know you're rolling with God. Because the world will be against you. If you're saying you got light and you got knowledge but the world is not against you, then you're in false light. Let me say that one more time. If you are claiming to have knowledge, wisdom, and light... My quote unquote light workers. You like to say you got light, but you are not being persecuted. You are being light by the world. Then you're not in the truth. You're not in the truth. See, the Bible, anybody who wrote with the Bible, and I ain't gonna say just Christians, people who truly will walk with God, because you got modern day Christianity and you have the true Christianity. Modern day Christianity with paganism and claiming and name it bullshit. I am talking about the traditional modern day, not modern day, traditional old school ancient Christianity where people were getting slayed, they were getting killed, they were getting beheaded, they were getting persecuted, they were getting stoned to death for their belief and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Right? So if you truly walking with the Messiah, you're going to get persecuted. You're going to get persecuted in the physical. Your family's going to be against you. Your friends are going to be against you. Your people at your job is going to be against you. Everything going to be against you. The spirit world is going to be against you. You're going to have to fight sleep paralysis. You're going to have to fight demons in your sleep. You're going to have to fight succubus, incubus, spirits, all you name it. Right? But that's the persecution. God said it in his word. It is written. You shall be persecuted for my name's sake. That's true knowledge. He said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. If you do not fear the Lord, then you're a fool. And you do not have knowledge. So you could talk all that esoteric bullshit. I like to talk about kundalini and chakras. But you don't fear the Lord. Who can kill the soul and the body? You's a fool. And with that being said, leave your comments in the comment section below. And I'll catch you brothers and sisters in the next video. Peace.